Well, hi there. You're listening to Podcast is Broken. It's a podcast that tries to make Canadian news fun-er. My name is Brittle Star. My name is Steve Boots. My name is Lisa. And these aren't our real names, obviously. I mean, come on. Like, I we'd mean, be that mostly. stupid. I mean, we'd be silly. Oh, we've lost Lisa again. <clears throat> oh, she's back. Okay, back, again. Back. The, oh, the pe- and this is my cat, Boo-Boo. He's currently sitting on my lap. He says hi. Boo-boo. Oh, Boo-Boo. Look at his little paws. Oh, I could be that cute if I wanted to. If you listen <laughs> close, there's purrs. Yeah, you have to put your paws on. To off. me. If you listen close to me, there's purrs. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks that so much for mostly only purrs when he gets his belly rubbed exactly yeah. and it's got to be in the right way by the right person um, <laughs> and then his leg kicks a little bit it's great <laughs> it is it's really good it stretches out the hamstrings um this uh, thanks so much for listening by the way to the podcast we greatly appreciate it and for spreading the word and we've got some exciting episodes coming up uh we've got now we spoke about this kind of off air as it were last week where uh we we're going to maybe have some guests, so that'll be exciting. I don't know. I think it'll ruin the dynamic, or will it be, it'll be okay, don't you think? I think it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Well, what if we're we, the merrier. Can I, I mean, can I trust you guys not to attack the guest? Depends, <laughs> depends on the guest. Depends on the guest. <laughs> I mean, that's Fair a enough. complicated question, isn't it? Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so, uh, anyway, today's episode, we're going to be uh, talking about a couple of things. It's, it's sort of being, uh, the topic was spearheaded by a recent video released by Pierre Polyev of his wife, Anna, uh, at one of the rallies and she did, gave her speech and she did a fine job, uh, you know, as far as, I don't as content I can't speak to, but, um, but delivery and performance was fine. Um, and it was, it made me, it was interesting for me because I thought to myself, I don't know how this is going to necessarily play. I don't know how I feel about this as a just a voter. I always felt uneasy, and I do feel uneasy when you see politicians bringing in family to sh- to stump for them for like to 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 you know to do their shilling, and it makes me feel a little bit. Eh, eh. Is it, it seems more hmm. performative than anything else? It makes it seem less genuine in a in a weird way. Even though that's the opposite of what they're trying to do. I think. What are your What are your thoughts on that? I don't know. In Canadian politics, family's almost always been kept out of it. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at the states, like first first ladies or first gentlemen's gentlemen now, um, <clears throat> they've always been sort of a little bit more in the public eye. But in Canada, that's not really been the case. Um, like Pierre Pierre Trudeau, and uh, uh, oh my God, Margaret. Margaret, yes? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Please tell me I've got it right. Yep. <laughs> hey, man, I was uh, not <clears throat> alive at that time. So There's no need to I... rub that in, Steve. You can just continue with your point. <laughs> 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 um, but no, it's it, outside of basically that specific example, wives and partners have largely stayed out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's really strategic in this case, because if you look at the polls, Polyev's getting killed in the... Like when you break down the voting demographics by male and female, yes, he's getting crushed. Yeah, and so it's very obviously a strategic move, and she's very well spoken. She's she's True. straight in front of a crowd. Yep. Like she's good at this. It's odd. Like I find it odd on the the campaign trail. Like you said, it's it's primarily been families in the background, not so much at the forefront. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that you know we have these <clears throat> these pre-campaign campaignings happening. Um, I think Steve's right. I think they're, she's trying to play to a demographic. I mean, there's a whole movement on on Twitter, Women Against Polyev or whatever it is, and, right. and there's a reason for that. So, But I don't necessarily know for the demographic that isn't um, liking the Polyev camp <clears throat> if her speaking on his behalf is really going to make any movement. You know, talking about how it's such a a difficulty leaving their children behind. Well, stay home. <laughs> no one's asking you to go out. Stay home. <laughs> I find I he find has it... so many skills outside of politics. After all, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, paper route. Um, he. he uh, I, I mean, it seemed like very transparently coming up after the whole revelation of the story of him going to uh, the door, uh, campaigning in Carlton. Carlton. Carlton Place. Not Carlton Place. Ottawa Carlton and um, 
and then talking to a woman at the door who asked some questions, and then the woman said that he asked to speak to the man of the house. <clears throat> now, that story was relayed by uh, the person who's running against um, Pierre Polyev in that riding. Um, so, I mean, you, I would, to me, that adds some credibility to it in a sense, but it seemed like the, the video and having her put front and center seemed very much calculated and, okay, look it, I'm still, the ladies still like me, right? Look at this. <laughs> and I'm not sure it works. Think, it's, I think he's using it as a way to speak out of both sides of his mouth, mm. right? Because he has been very much courting the sort of frustrated male vote that's floating out there in Canadian politics. Right. And, like, when you look at sort of the YouTube tagging situation with men going their own way and all that stuff, mm. he's courting a very specific kind of voter. The problem is that courting that specific kind of voter is going to alienate women voters. <clears throat> And so by rolling his wife out, he's basically trying to send two conflicting messages. Well, by just using two different <clears throat> mouthpieces, basically. Like, not to call her a mouthpiece. I think that's probably the wrong term. But, yeah. like, <laughs> by using two different voices, really. Right, right. Like, it's a two-for-one two sort of deal where it's like if you're, you're, you vote for him, you also get this angle, too. That idea. Exactly. Yeah. He's saying two completely contrasting things just through her mm -hmm. but i feel like we've seen her more and certainly in their little commercials with the family since trudeau's separation so i think they're playing to the whole family right dynamic look at mm -hmm. you know we are the the thing to you know aspire work to work towards is, yeah, yeah exactly <clears throat> yeah and I'm, I'm it's interesting i mean i think it, you know you're saying it's not really something that happens in canadian politics a lot to be trying out the family when, in a sense like you do see a lot of family members coming out we saw stephen harper's kids we saw we see uh, justin and sophie's kids um and we certainly like back in you know justin's dad day dad's day which was before you were born steve um uh you saw you know pierre and margaret's kids a lot yeah uh, you know um, but at the same time, I'm not sure that they were ever really used for campaigning apart from just like picture pieces, you know, that's it. Like just sort of props in a sense. Not, I mean, that sounds terrible to say, but I mean, in a, <laughs> objectively, I think that's what they were. It's you bring them out and they stand beside you and people, you know, glean from that image. Oh, well, you're a family yeah. man. You're a family person. Right. It's, this they, is nice. They stand on the stage <clears throat> while they give the speech. Like it's a pretty standard position in Canadian yeah. politics. Or it's but the like first at, day of school, at, right? That's yeah, the first yeah, day exactly. School pictures, yeah. But at basically every level of Canadian politics, family is largely off the table. And I actually think that's a good I thing. I think it's a like, great thing, yeah. In, in Saskatchewan, people try to go after Scott Moe for all number of personal things. Mm -hmm. And frankly, like, I think, I don't know, especially if it's somebody who's in his family and not him personally... Is it relevant to his leadership? Not really. I don't think so either. I mean, I think unless it's <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> it's there's a line in the kill in a killer's song. Um, the song is called "Run for Cover," and the line is, uh, uh, "He's standing with his wife standing by her side. He did her dirty, but no one died." That idea of uh, you're, his per he might be a skeezy husband. However, he's as a politician, as a leader, whatever, he's okay. Um, and there is that kind of separation, which I think is really important. Cause I, I, I just cringe whenever like I, I, I cringe when people bring their kids into it. I don't like that at all. I don't even like seeing uh, like Justin will be, you know, with his kids doing stuff, and it's like, man, it's great and it's lovely and it's nice to see, but I feel terrible for the kids. I mean, I feel bad for them because I think even just personally, not that we ever forced our kids to get into social media, but they were part of the ride. They were certainly part of the, you know, the four of us as we were doing social media stuff. And I know that that had, that was hard and that had consequences. Um, and I, and I worry about kids and that kind of stuff when it comes to spouses, I think, okay, well, I guess we're, it's fair game now. Is that what's happening? I'm not sure. It's easier for spouses. I mean, the bottom line is it's not anyone's choice except the person that's putting themselves in running in politics. Right. But you have your partner mm. or spouse or what have you to support you. Children don't make that choice. You're either born into it or you're sort of brought along. Like I think, and I remember mm -hmm. <clears throat> Chelsea Clinton and just how they dragged yes. that poor girl, yes. right? Um, and, you know, even the Obama girls. Like, I mean, it's it's what happens 
when they're out and about all the time. Um, and it's it's used mm-hmm. as a weapon against, you know, well, I don't like the politician, so I'm going to make fun of their child, which isn't fair to the children, right? They're dealing with enough stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't even have mm-hmm. to look south of the border. Look no further than when Justin Trudeau took his son to, I think it was Barbie. Barbie. To Barbie, and they got yeah. absolutely ruthlessly attacked just for going to a movie. And then he took his yeah. daughter and, to Oppenheimer, yeah. and it was the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although How you have you? to admit, doing the photo with his daughter at Oppenheimer the next day was like the funniest thing he could have done. It it was. <laughs> it was. Because it was kind of like, oh, I don't know. It's like you can just see like maybe his daughter's son was like, well, I would have liked to have seen Oppenheimer too as well. You know what I mean? Or she might have been saying like, I would like to have seen Barbie as well. That would have yeah. been great. Um it's it's uh, you're right. And like kids are just born into it. And, and, you know, Chelsea Clinton's a really good example of that because she was just absolutely beaten up in the press when she was a little kid, when she had sort of the curly yeah. hair and it was all frizzy and all that kind of stuff. And it was just so awful and terrible. But does that. As a side note, by the way, uh, Chelsea uh, follows me on Twitter and at the end of Dairy Girls, she makes a cameo and I, I DM'd her to say great job. She didn't oh. respond. Um, I just was a name drop. It was a name drop, for a futile name drop, that just to show you that I'm just like you. That <laughs> Regular, she's also like us common you know people. Right? Chelsea Clinton also ignores <laughs> him. He's never written. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's to show my appeal to the common man. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't know if that kind of thing works because exactly for that reason, when Chelsea Clinton was getting beaten up by the press. It didn't make you like the other side better. It made you think, go, oh, oh, that's not really good. And it's the same thing with, you know, any politicians, kids or whatever, that kind of thing. But again, w- is there a massive difference in having like Anna Polyev step up and do this? Like, are we allowed to like, does he feel good about taking shots or, or was it like a, almost seemed like a red herring? It's like, no, no, don't get distracted by her. I don't think this moves the needle a ton, if I'm perfectly honest. Like, it's it'll appeal to a very specific segment of the base. And mm. it's a way for him to roll out messages without um, sort of inviting the usual attacks. Sort of, it's a different way around it. Right. But beyond that, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it's a decent Twitter clip, but I don't think that it's going to draw <clears throat> anyone new to the cause. I don't think... You know, Anna Polia. Or is, does she go by Anna or Anita? I think I've they call her Anna. I, I think that's okay. Yeah. So I mm. think Anna Poliev, like she's, she'll be there on the campaign trail, and she's, I would say, probably a useful asset to him just as a campaigner. Sure. But yeah. is is this sort of thing like is anybody making a decision based on the words of the candidate's wife? I really don't think so, and Maybe. I don't, I don't know. If it's nudging people, what, what, what makes you think it might? I think that there is, I mean, this goes back to lots of conversations we've had about politics in general and how the, the, you know, most of the normal people in the country, uh, unlike the three of us aren't utterly consumed by politics all the time. And so they're just taking the skim top little bit of it. And that's no fault of their own. That's just by, by the fact of life. Um, And I feel that they, you know, if she starts taking shots, as she said here in the, in in her quote, um, if the job is too tough and boring, Justin, then get out of the way. We will fight for Canada is what Pierre said. And then he, and she said in the thing, whenever I think we have it tough, I remember the extraordinary people that carry the country on their shoulders, the nurse, the waitress, the plumber, and yes, the trucker who are suffering more. Okay. Which I thought, wow. Okay. But I mean, you're, I, I totally agree with you in that I think that he's using her as a way to convey messaging that is kind of like he's holding her up as like a human shield <laughs> um, so that she can say this stuff. Uh, but I think there are people who are going to listen to that and go, well, look, at she, th- she thinks that way, too. <laughs> That's two people, you <laughs> two know, people. as opposed to seeing them as part and parcel. You know what okay, I mean? So two things about that. <laughs> First, <laughs> push, push the rage down. Um, I think he's, I mean, look, it, it's his partner. It's his, it's his wife. So to have her on the campaigning trail is beneficial. Um, considering all the embedded hashtags of the past, leaning towards misogynistic views, you know, do you have now your spouse mm-hmm. to sort of garner that um, female vote, I guess? 
um, I don't think I think Steve's right. It's not going to sway if if people aren't um, really in the middle of like, oh, I don't know who to go for. I don't think having an Ida on, or on the stage is going to do anything. But secondly, I need to speak to that quote because mm. <laughs> I listened. <laughs> I listened to uh, Justin's uh, interview in French because I can speak mm-hmm. French. And the translation of what he said was not him saying that the job is boring, which is what they've latched on to, sure. right? And that's what yeah. just yeah. annoys me is that, yeah, so they latch on to that and they say, well, we'll do it. If you think it's so boring, we're, we're willing to do it. Um, but that's not what he was saying at all. <laughs> and unless people go and listen right. to it, because the translations with the BBC weren't even correct, right? So um, he, he was, yeah. he was did, not what saying. What did he actually say? Did he so, say peu plat? <laughs> He did, but in the context of what he's saying, it just related to it being like a difficult, like a, a tenuous it, type of job. Yeah, it's it's a tricky it's a tricky one because that that like the expression saying peu plat, it's it can mean about six different things depending mm-hmm. on how you lay it out. Like it's it's right. a pretty flexible turn of a phrase. Mm-hmm. And so I think I think even though the context is there, I think it's worth noting he did in the same conversation say thinks about quitting the job every day. <laughs> that but... seemed to like hold a little more like, you know, that's probably time to start polishing up the old LinkedIn there, JT. <laughs> <laughs> but again, context is everything because I mean, honestly, if you've been in his position, who wouldn't be <clears throat> thinking every day, you know what? Maybe I got to find something else to do because it's a very difficult. It's a difficult position. Right. And all the things that, you know, he's dealt with in the past and the things that he's moving towards in the future. And I'm not defend like I'm not a I, but I just mm-hmm. think if we're going to use quotes, we need to make sure that we are using the quotes in the context with which they're said, not inflating them. But I guess that's what politics is these days. So. Um. So I do want to draw the conversation back to one, I think, important thing about Pierre Poiliev and rolling out his family in PR work. I think something I I think the reason behind it maybe isn't necessarily as cynical as we may be thinking it is like Pierre Poiliev is not a tremendously likable guy like just as he's a very (laughs) abrasive politician. And I don't think that's much of a secret like he, he was the conservative kind of lead attacker for years and now he's still doing it as the leader. But when he's in footage with his kids and with his wife, it doesn't look forced. Like, it looks like he's a guy who genuinely loves his family and spends time with Sure. Them. Okay. And so it is, they know exactly what they have. They have a way of showing him not seem like a twerp. <laughs> um, because with them, he does seem pretty sincere. And I feel like that's kind of the heart of why they're leaning into it, is they're trying to at least build some sense of charm around him. Mm. And the only setting you really see it in, because he can't turn politician off when he's with politicians. Adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you never hear stories from, like, his friends, right? There's nobody who, like, (laughs) tells the tales of old Skippy, right? (laughs) Like, have you heard anything from his college roommates, his bowling buddies? I don't know. Do you think he just plays chess against himself and spins the board around? I don't know what that man does for fun. There hasn't been, I mean, you're right. There hasn't been a tremendous amount of uh, nice little anecdotes, you know, from back in the day. There's been some commentary by people who have been close to him that has been less than complimentary. I don't know if I've ever heard Um, a favorable, personable story from his past. I, I know, and that sounds terrible to say. It's like from a uh, from a human perspective, it's like God. It can't be that cartoonish, can it? But but maybe it almost it is. I don't know. it almost feels like he was born a politician, <laughs> like 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 that whole birth to age pretty six, close. Right? That whole birth to age sixteen never yeah. happened, except for the one hockey shot, and then he was just in Ottawa. <laughs> so yeah, but like yeah. I will say, as a teacher, there are some kids like that who just have a singular drive from the time sure. they're little. And for every Pierre Poiliev who's actually made it to that point, there are a lot of kids who every step of the way was planned to become prime minister. Many of yeah. them. 
Sure. Right? So, like, is it that surprising that there's somebody who started working on campaigns when they were 16 and hasn't stopped? Eh. No. I mean, what's interesting to me is, and I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate here, just as we're doing a little nice little tangent. <clears throat> um, so he's essentially, he gets criticized a lot, Polyev does, for being a politician his whole life, essentially. His whole working career has been a politician. Um, it's easy for me to find a reason to say that that is not a good thing. It's there's a disconnect. There's it's too much money. There's there's lots of reasons to say this is not a healthy good thing to do. However, if he was really into plumbing, and he was a great plumber from the time he was a teenager, he'd be an amazing plumber by now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would I'd be like. Yeah, let's get that guy. He knows what he's doing. We actually have a plumber like that who's like he's been doing. Pl he's been a plumber since he was like twenty years old. And it's like he's the guy I'm going to go to because he's dedicated his life to plumbing. Why do we think? Like, why is there? It's so easy to say uh, him as a career politician is a bad thing. And I, I, I mean, again, I kind of have my own answers to that. But what is? Are there others? I think it comes down to the the. There's a politician plays more than one role. So they're a politician and a political operator on one end, and they're a representative on the other end. And the mm -hmm. longer you spend in politics, the better you become as a political operative, and in a lot of cases, the worse you become as a representative. Because you spend so mm -hmm. much time in the halls of power and connecting with you know, the people pulling the strings on everything, you, you spend less and less time on the factory floor and more and more time in the C-suite, right? Like, mm -hmm. And so I think that's what people's primary concern here is is that like he the longer you spend in the halls of power the more you get disconnected with the lived experiences of people right does he know what it's like to worry about not being able to make rent well probably not because he lives in stornoway right like yeah and so the longer you the further removed you are from those experiences the less you're able to create and craft policy that will meet the needs of people in those positions Okay, so if your plumber has dedicated their entire life to plumbing, <laughs> but has never fixed a toilet, <laughs> that's a problem, <clears throat> right? If your wow, plumber... there's the clip right there. There's the clip for the show right there. <laughs> if your plumber picks out the wrong wrenches every time, even though they've been doing it for 20 years... For a long right. time, right. And I think that's yeah. That's that would be the question for me is, sure, he's been in Ottawa longer than a lot of people. What has he done in that time? I mean, right. critique if other plumbers. You, I don't remember the exact number, <laughs> but it is absolutely he has introduced less than 10 bills in his entire time in Parliament. Yeah. That's been a long that's time. Been a long time. Oh, yeah. It's less than a bill a year by a fair bit. Wow. Okay. All right. No, I mean, our plumber is great. I'll have you know. <laughs> yes, but if your plumber made one repair call annually and that entire time only actually fixed two, I think he's only passed two legislations, only actually fixed two toilets in an entire multiple decade career, would you <laughs> and, be like, yeah, that's my guy? And, and build, you a, <laughs> build you hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Right. Be like, yeah, but he's been doing it forever. He must be good. <laughs> kind of. He's he been must doing be good. it for years. <laughs> he's got to be good at it by now. Nope. He keeps telling everyone he's the best. So who's to say, really? <laughs> he's going to be the supreme plumber one day. That's what we keep hearing. So <laughs> it's interesting, you know, because uh, I mean, I think you're right. I think you're totally accurate, obviously. Um, but there is that going back to what Steve said about how, um, you know, does does uh, Polyev have the experience of knowing of worrying about rent? Well, not really. No, he doesn't. How is it? It's not really just about those experiences. So it's not so much the case that the guy has been in, in politics for decades. It's not it's not even the case that the guy has never had to worry about rent. It's the case that he has no demonstrated resume of stuff completed in a sense that I think you could say the same things about, uh, you know, being out of touch and I'm air quoting there out of touch with the common person, um, to, you know, to Justin Trudeau, he's never worried about rent. I guarantee he's never worried about rent. 
Um, and I don't know if that matters. Like I, I don't, it's maybe there's, is it, there's an interpretation. Is it, is it just achievement? Is that what's, is, or is it a feel, is there a feeling of connection? Like, what is it, what are we talking about? I mean, coming from money is one thing. Fine. There was always money in, in Justin's bank account, I'm sure. But he did venture out sure. on his own. We, I don't know what his parents gave him or if they said to him, go mm. out and make your way and we'll be here. Like, who the hell knows? Right. What movie of the week it is. I don't know. Right. Um, sure. But he seems to have at least a little more lived experience than what I at least perceive mm-hmm. Pierre has. Um, and I always worry about Pierre's interactions with foreign dignitaries, what that would look like. Um, because he is fairly robotic Mm. and Mm -hmm. is not very engaging unless it's him speaking. Right. And so when I look (laughs) to a leader, um, how are you going to represent us on the world stage? And that's what, I mean, aside from his politics, I just, I don't think he's very warm, warm and inviting. I think a big part of it is. And and I think you kind of pointed at it. Justin Trudeau, for his successes and faults, has been things other than a politician. Right. And so he brings experiences, he brings knowledge, he brings connections from a previous life, from a different world. But And that, that doesn't just mean, like, friends. It also means a skill set. It means he's seen how public policy can affect people's lives. With Pierre Poiliev, all he's basically ever been is a politician. And as a result Mm -hmm. to him, everything is politics. Everything is a maneuver. Everything is a plan, a ploy. And so, like, if you remember when he met um, Joe Biden, he made some comment about, like, being part of the oil opposition. And Biden just kind of giggled in his face. (laughs) Because he's he's so cartoonishly politician-y all the time. Because it's all he's got. Like, what are his hobbies? Mm-hmm. I don't right? know. I, we I don't know, know anything about him, really. He likes politics. He likes yelling at Justin Trudeau. He likes um, whatever the people around him appear to like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, it's, in, I mean, he's, but the best thing he has going for him is the fact that people are tired of Justin Trudeau. That, that's, that's, it. that's his, that's the biggest thing he has going for him for sure. I think otherwise people would be like, no. Oh, yeah. I don't think so. So I brought um, up his bill count. He brought for, he's brought forward seven bills total all time okay. and passed okay. one. <laughs> which, which was it? What was uh, it? Bill C 23, an act to amend the Canada Elections Act and other acts to make consequential amendments to certain acts. That is four <laughs> acts in one sentence. Wow. And they wonder why politics Holy. is so. <clears throat> why people can't get into it. Yeah. My yeah. inner teacher is grabbing my red pen right? and just going nuts <laughs> on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> So just going back, we're going to steer us back slightly to the uh, Anna Paglia video and stuff like that. And one of the things that I noticed about that video was I thought, oh, this will do really well. And it was really presented initially, honest to God, when I saw this video for the first time um, on Twitter, uh, X, um, I thought, I thought it was a, a Republican. I thought it was, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have the sound on. I don't really know what she looks like. Um, and I saw CPAC, but I read C-SPAN in my head i just sort of glanced at it as i scrolled by and i was like oh it's this it's like some woman it's uh it's uh what's her face the, there's a super crazy republican there's a lot of them Bobert. she looks like Bobert. uh and it wasn't no. Bobert, but somebody else like that and uh the one who ran who was running for republican leadership and then bailed oh, oh, just lost her um not uh not nancy mace the other one no. Someone in is listening to this right now is like you're idiots <laughs> oh sorry is we're canadian sorry <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Nikki uh, Haley. Sorry. sorry, we got there. There you go. There we go. Um, <laughs> but I thought it was like one of those people, and I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. Why is he sharing this? And then I was like, oh, oh, no, wait. Because he doesn't actually say in the text that it's that who no. it is that, that's speaking, mm-hmm. which is a bit of a, an attempted power move, I think, sort of for branding. Um, but... It's it, it, to me, I thought, I don't know if this is going to work. And I, I, Shannon and I were talking about it, and I was like, I don't know if this resonates with people or not. Looking at the numbers, it did well. I don't know how many people hate watched it, but I mean, 
the tweet itself with the video <laughs> for listeners at home. Lisa is pointing to her own head. Um, but I, I, you know, for the tweet itself has been viewed 442,000 times. Um, the likes are five and a half thousand. These aren't obviously hard metrics to go by for anything necessarily. However, those numbers are okay. Mm-hmm. Like they're not knocking out of the park. They're not like amazing numbers. For a when national you it politician's to, wife, or for a national politician, it's not anything. It's striking. not massive, and it's also it's it's also uh, the kind of the first real time she's been spotlit as such to be like, hey, look, this is her on her own. Um, compared to you know uh, what's his face Sean Fraser's video. Let's just see what the numbers are for that. Uh, let's see if we can find that here. Du, 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 du. Insert musical interlude here. Uh, <laughs> we're dancing. Du, 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 we're dancing. Exactly. So 800. <laughs> the tweet has been viewed 811,000 times. That doesn't mean the video. Again, those are the tweet views, not the video views themselves. Um, and it's got 4,500 likes. Really? Now. I'm a little yeah, surprised which is interesting. to hear that yeah. the Qualia video is outperforming it. Well, yes and no. I think mm. in a way, because I think that there's a couple of factors to think in there. I think about it. And one is that Twitter slash X is very much a not a super friendly Trudeau liberal party uh, ground. Right. Very true. Um, so there's a lot of people who were just not engaging with that video. And compared to a lot of people who are there's also a lot of people who are hate watching both videos, I guess, yeah. really. Um but it's it's interesting. I, like I don't know if, again, it goes back to previous conversations. Are, are people just losing interest? Are they just getting tired of being angry all the time? And they're like, oh my god, just call an election and get it over with, so I can stop thinking about it. I don't know. I really don't know. It's just interesting. And I think, especially for Anna Polyev's video, I thought to myself, I thought that would be, I thought would be like ten thousand likes on this now since the sixteenth, so just yesterday. Um, but yeah, just didn't didn't seem to happen. Now maybe it'll take off during the week. I don't know. I don't know. Well, she did that commercial, remember, where she talked about her husband and blah 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 blah. Yeah. So it's not the first time we've seen her. It's the first time we've seen her speak to an audience, right? Hmm. I don't know. I also think it's it's also to some degree apples and oranges when it's something being posted by a cabinet minister versus the leader of a party, right? Like, I think. Uh, I, I'm willing to bet that Sean Fraser's Twitter following is a fraction of Pierre Polyev's. So I think there's something, yeah, it's, something to be said there. He's got 209,000. Sean Fraser has 209,000 followers on Twitter and to, uh, to Pierre's 910,000 followers. Uh, now, to be fair... <laughs> Although now uh, we're getting into the weeds. There we go. <laughs> Metrics. Exactly. We're looking at analytics but now. <laughs> Go now home. to get into it, uh, Justin Trudeau's account shared Sean Fraser's video as well, uh, um, and it got his retweet of the video or reshare of the video got five and a half thousand likes, so on par, but also way more views. I know about the same views, but five and a half five hundred thousand views. It's just interesting to me. And there's like, of course, there's always more comments than likes usually, or at least competing amounts of li- uh, comments and likes on liberal posts and, and Trudeau posts compared mm-hmm. to, you know, so the conservatives. related but unrelated question for the two of you. If you're Justin Trudeau and you see Sean Fraser out taking the lead on the housing stuff and looking yeah. quite good while doing it, putting yeah. out this video. Cuts a, fi- cuts a fine figure mm-hmm. he does, that man. <laughs> He's like six six or Calm something down. here. <laughs> I, apparently, you've got a thing for the tall fellas. Mm. How are you? Uh, are you a David Eby man? That's your question. Oh, Lisa. is it? I thought like, he was asking you. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, you, you were the one who said he cut a fine figure after all. Um, That's true. I could have answered. Right. I could have answered. Um, He's no Sean Fraser. That's right. There you go. But if you're if you're Justin Trudeau and you see what Sean Fraser is doing, and Sean Fraser is very quickly emerging as oh my gosh. a potential heir apparent, are you nervous? I don't think you're nervous. I think you're looking at him as an escape Absolutely. hatch. Oh man. If you're Justin Trudeau and you're the least bit interested in an off ramp, it is presenting itself. 
But he's not interested in an off ramp. He said that many times, yeah. and I, I believe him. I believe him. I think he yeah, wants to ride it out 2025 and see if he can actually um, make the changes that they're talking about. But 2029, he's out. And I think they need to start getting somebody. Oh, yeah. Um, they need to start getting somebody prepped for that. And Mr. Fraser may be that person. He's very. Um, he speaks about politics and not a political way. He speaks. He speaks to it in a way that people understand and when the liberals almost inevitably wind up in opposition he'd be good as an opposition leader yeah. too yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah he's uh i i think you know i when you go back to the quote of trudeau saying uh that he was thinking about quitting every day <laughs> i mean we were talking about this today in the house as well and, and my eldest uh owen he was like it's like well who you would be worried if you weren't thinking about quitting every day it must suck the job must suck tremendously um I and i how many of us don't, don't go into work suck. and say every day oh i wish i could quit here's this the thing <laughs> i'm out of here i i used to believe it when politicians and fancy pants always used to insist how much their job <laughs> sucked and then i realized yeah. if it sucks that much why do they fight tooth and nail to keep that damn job every four years i don't think he's well unlike yourself steve some people want to serve the public <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the real vibe Ouch. you get from most of these folks. <laughs> the fancy pantses. <laughs> oh, yeah, them fancy pantses. Because when I'm drinking my, like, $80 orange juice, I think, yes, this is a public service I am offering. <laughs> <laughs> I do well, I this for the people. <laughs> I, think a lot of them, I think a lot of them do it for the, th for the uh, pension threshold. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that seems to be evident for a lot of politicians is writing at whatever it is, six years they have to be in office before they get the pension. Um, yeah, but doesn't Trudeau I have that's, 14 that's billion gazillion dollars, according to what everybody says? So, <laughs> oh, but I do think I you know. I always laugh about that when people are like, "Look at Pierre Poilievre's net worth," and it's like, "Okay, what are you basing that on?" Well, I googled Pierre Poilievre <laughs> net worth, and a net worth, website I've never heard of in my entire life said he's worth 15 million dollars. Okay, what's my net worth? <laughs> this is you guys keep talking. Oh, it's, gonna yeah. say, it's gonna say a million guaranteed, maybe two. Come God, on, I hope so. big I need, money. I need the money. I need the money. Let's learn of Stuart's fabulous wealth. Okay. Okay. Well, while uh, he's while he's looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm so excited because it's rather insulting. Oh. Brittle Star's net worth <laughs> uh -oh. is two and a half thousand dollars to seventeen thousand dollars. Oh no. We need to start paying him. To oh you. my God! So this is the thing. This is the thing we have to take away from this: is that these online Googleable net worths are highly accurate. Right. <laughs> Bang on! So he must have a good billion dollars because mine's spot on. I was gonna say, go to Brittle oh, Star's man. website and buy a T-shirt, please. <laughs> please, get. Let's get my net worth up to three thousand. Oh, any day now, you're oh finally going to reach the big three zero zero zero. Wow. Yeah. Well, I won't even talk to you, chumps, <laughs> after that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's. I was just thinking, like, you know, I think that Trudeau is going to stick around. He's going to. He sees Sean Fraser as, as, a, as a, an escape hatch. Um, if things get really dire, I don't think they will get really dire. I think that the, the scales are going to keep tipping back the other direction. And that's not me being optimistic. I think that there's just been so many silly, stupid things that the opposition has done that I feel like they're going to trip themselves up. I think they're going to, we're going to get to 2025 and there's going to be no need. I don't think it's going to be a big win for the liberals, mm. but I do think people are going to go, no. I mean, listen, I'd like to vote for the conservatives, but... They seem like crazy pants. I mean, I've, I've even said that before about how talking to a prominent member of the conservative party in a casual setting, and uh, they said to me, I'm just waiting for the crazy guys to get out of the way. That's, and they were like, they had, it's like they had no choice but to just wait for it, which was really depressing. But at the same time, it was like, Ugh, okay, I guess that's the situation we're in now. So I don't know. Do you think that to some degree, a part of what's happening and what's already underway is Poilievre started the campaign functionally mm -hmm. the minute he was elected as party leader. And campaigns suck the life out of people. There's a reason why the writ is, what, six sure. weeks or eight weeks uh, federally? I can't six, remember. Six, I think. Six. 
I think it's six, but like yeah. there's a reason why the writ is short because that campaigns are <clears throat> grueling. And he's been knocking doors, he's been running rallies nonstop. He's been on the road campaigning. That is number one, draining. And number two, you are making so many sound bites, so many statements, so many public appearances that so many mistakes can happen, so many slips, so many little hiccups. And you wind up burning through your media cycle and there's so much noise that I don't know if he's doing himself any favors here. I mean, I think he's just going to. Well, yeah, I think he end up. Bookends. Go. Um, I think no, no, he, please, um, please he's go just ahead. going to keep repeating <laughs> the same thing <laughs> for the next year and a bit. Um, like we've talked about in the past. I mean, there's a lot of room for screw ups between now and, and 2025 and a 2025. So it's the time now. And I'm hoping with that Sean Frazier uh, video that the liberals are going to start to come out and give us little snippets of what they've done. And I mean, I'll give, I'll give that video <clears throat> credit, although mm -hmm. I don't like the 1980s school video music in the background, but, um, it was pointing out um, Pierre's <laughs> deficiencies, I guess we'll say, was done in a way, in a nice way. It wasn't in a in a um, attacking way, but it's to show the reality of, you know, what he did when he um, was housing minister, which was a whole pile of nothing. And it was done in a policy focused way, like yeah. it focused on what people have done and what the actual policy is rather than just he's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. And that I think is pretty refreshing too. Yeah, it did. It is. It did. Of course, at the end of the video, I think which was the most poignant part was when he did the little hard supercut mm -hmm. of uh, Polyev saying, "When I'm prime minister, when I'm prime minister, when I'm prime minister," which has been the thing that stuck out to me the most since the get go as well. Is that you've got a guy who's had a logo made saying Pierre Polyev for prime yeah. minister. It's like that's not how we do things, buddy. We don't. Nobody votes for the prime minister. No one goes in and says, I made my ex beside Polyev. That's not how it works. Um, so I, that was the more most effective part to me. The policy part was yeah. nice because it was like, here's some hard facts. And then I think that's what made the video good was that at the end of it, it was just a case of like, and this guy just wants to win. He doesn't, he hasn't done anything. He doesn't have any plans for anything. He just yeah. wants to, what's his plan? Yeah. Winning. That's it. So it's, so here's my question just as, a, as we get out of this uh <laughs> spiral of networks. as we are dazzled by <laughs> his fabulous wealth <laughs> we're not worthy literally <laughs> to think i started this off 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 recording by telling you about my tales of alan thick and now look at me um but uh would you guys and this is an i mean i've already got my answer to, to this question but would you guys bring your spouses in to further your goals, careers. My my answer is I mean I, I we just did by necessity myself and Shannon, and now we find out that people like her more than they like me. So she has to do stuff. So that's a risk. It is a risk. It's a risk you have to take, mm -hmm. right? Um, no, because what happened? What like in Justin's case, what happens when it? Yes. It yeah. ends. Well, I thought about that right? being Shannon as well. Exactly. What if she leaves me? <laughs> I'm sure Shannon has thought about it more. Than she's Shannon. probably got all her social accounts ready to go. <laughs> so I I know that my wife listens to this. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I I just let her make the call. It's it's entirely in her in her hands. And so like. There have been times where we've done TikTok dances together and mm -hmm. uh, do not look those well, up. Well, that's too late. Please. I'm going to do they're, it right now. They're adorable. Exactly. They're if adorable. you did not. Um, but like, and that's that's her call. When she wants to do that, we do that. And so like sometimes if I'm streaming on Twitch, she'll come join me. But I think as long as the partner has the agency to decide how they do and don't participate in it, it's fine, but I think it's different with political stuff because there's there's a layer of people being just vile to politicians sure. and people in their families that I think maybe even even online content creation I don't think reaches that level. And so it, at the end of the day, it's always the the call of the person it's going to directly affect. But man, I wish it was 
better options than what's happening to them these days. But see, that's but that's her. Like I remember your <clears throat> dance video. <laughs> wow! And Did you hear that? I mean, pause at the beginning there. Your <clears throat> dance videos. It, air quotes. They were no. They were they were epic. They were. You should really pin those. Um, Such rhythm I have. But that was. <laughs> she paused again. That brought a little bit of humanity, like Steve, right? So it wasn't just politics. It was some fun. But that was her choice. Mm. You weren't using her in a commerce way. And I feel like with Anna's video or however Pierre is going to choose to use her or she wants to be a part of it, it just seems gimmicky, right? It seems forced. We feel, we feel pretty comfortable that she's, <laughs> she's comfortable with it, don't you think? I think she seems to me she's comfortable oh, with it. Oh, yeah. And this is it. Like, to me, yeah, maybe, but at the same time, you've got to also bear in mind, and I don't mean this insultingly, I mean this, like, as a sincere statement, what kind of mindset would the partner of somebody, or would the partner of Pierre Poliev have, right? This is somebody who chose a politician's mm, politician right. as their life partner. If they aren't at least vaguely interested in politics, what on earth are they going to talk about? Right? So in my mind, the fact that she very obviously knows what she's doing, knows what she's talking about, I think she's got the kind of agency to make that kind of call without any doubt. And I think, like, I think yeah, as I, I, I give her, I give her a lot of credit. I think she's, she's something, she's something impressive. What are we talking about? Your, your wife um, or Pierre's wife now? Oh, okay. Pierre's wife. <laughs> you don't give your own wife any credit? That's terrible. Moving on, Lisa. <laughs> oh, Next. I give my wife infinite credit. <laughs> anyway. Darling, if you're listening, you are the love of my life. Anyway. And the sun, the moon, and the stars. <laughs> but as uh, Michelle Pierre, whatever her name is, posted something. Uh, Ferrari. Thank you. Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. Ferrari. Um, <laughs> on uh anna's birthday calling her the first lady can't wait till you're yes. the first lady yes and i feel like anna poliev mm. really wants to be the first lady <laughs> yes even though we don't have that yes <laughs> it's it's the same as the sticker it's the same right? as pierre poliev for prime minister it's like it's, it's like cosplay yep. it's like west wing cosplay yep. all all that's popping into my head right now is Ron DeSantis's wife wearing nothing but Jackie O outfits for like the entire <laughs> campaign. In preparation. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like, I think part of that has to do with the type of politics that he's playing, right? He's playing a very US style mm -hmm. of politics. And so he's also depending on an audience that frankly sure. watches Fox News, watches a lot of American content and aligns in a lot of cases with the US Republican Party and Trump specifically. And so by not necessarily aligning himself with them, but by playing that same brand of politics, it's inviting those voters to sort of come over to his side. And I think that's the game he's playing. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of by accidents. I think that they're doing a lot of word choices very intentionally, for sure. Absolutely. Well, and yeah, so they, they throw out, you know, I'm running for prime minister. You know, she wants to be the first lady. I don't even know if we have a term for the prime minister's wife. I don't know. Do we? Prime minister's wife. I don't think we Yeah, don't. I don't think we have a term. We do. Well, like, is there an official... <laughs> let me get I don't know. Google. Her? <laughs> them? Them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a term. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all just so fraught because... In a simpler world, they would just be off the table and be able to live their own lives. But I don't think that luxury is really available to anyone. In I the think it would probably lending itself to social media as well are, are part of the blame to social media because there's that desire for the authenticity. Like you got you and your wife, Steve, doing TikTok dances um, where there's, as Lisa said, <clears throat> totally accurate. It's the same reason that people like whenever I, Shannon and I do something people really enjoy it because it seems to make it a bit more real for whatever reason. Um, and I think that that's part of the politics aspect now, as you're saying that you, you, you can't almost be a politician without including that part of the authentic part of your life in your marketing. I'm not sure if that's good or not, but I mean, cause as you said, cause I think politicians take way more abuse online than, you know, content creators do. That's for sure. 
I'd say more than just about it. Though anyone. I did get a fantastic comment uh, on a post. Oh, it was a post for my son's birthday. And somebody commented, you're grooming him to be a douche just like you. <laughs> and my son- Someone has to be the heir to the $3,000. <laughs> That three thousand dollars ain't going to the government. It's gonna go to. It's got to follow the yeah, bloodline. I mean, exactly. <laughs> he's gonna store it all in a Scrooge McDuck and style jump into it. Pool. Exactly. He'll have to get it broken down into nickels, but still, he'll really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my yeah, like I don't know. It's it's one of those things where like I think Justin Trudeau is the perfect example of this, right? He was raised by a politician in the public eye. And he chose yeah. to embrace it. But for every one of those, or for Ben Mulrooney, who's same thing, raised in the public eye and chose to mm -hmm. embrace it in a different way, there are lots of politicians' kids who have stayed right off the radar. And I think even now, like, you know, Justin Trudeau's kids only really show up in the public eye yes. when he wants them to. And I think there's something positive to mm -hmm. be said for that, right? It, it seems like the media still respects certain boundaries, at least to some degree. Thank goodness. Yeah, I hope so. I don't think they chase them down like they do in the States, yeah. right? Like that's, mm. you're right. But I was, I, I was thinking, ironically, did any, did we care about any prime minister's wife prior to Margaret Trudeau? Like, did I anybody mean, care who Stephen Baker's wife was? I don't think so. I mean, that maybe like from a socialite perspective, I mean, like sort of like, you know, social events and stuff like that. But I mean, but at the same time, media played a huge impact in Margaret Trudeau becoming a household name. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her stories of being with the Rolling Stones and all that kind of stuff. It's like that was just that played in perfectly with the, the explosion of media and tabloids and all that kind of stuff, I think. Yeah. Well, that and even was, that was such a golden age of yeah. celebrity, right? <laughs> but even Mila Mulrooney, like they they were always like obsessed about her fashion and her haircuts. Yeah. Um and her haircuts, mm. right? But I'm just trying to think of like who else really has what other spouse has really been um public. I mean, Stephen Harper's wife whose name eludes me right now, um did a bunch of I, I can't remember what she campaigned for. I want to say it was animal rights stuff. Right. I do know she filled up 24 Sussex, Sussex with cats. Um, <laughs> Hence the need for renos. <laughs> honestly, Lorene, that's Lorene Harper. Lorene, you thank you. Yeah. yeah. Which I knew it started with an L and I knew I was wrong. But it also reminds me of like Lorene Harper and talking about Harper reminds me of Maureen McTeer, of course, Joe Clark's wife. She was fairly prominent. Um, as yeah. like a, uh, she was quite vocal about various things and causes and all that kind of stuff and was very educated and that sounds like she could, uh, that sounded slightly backhanded. I didn't mean to be backhanded, uh, but meaning like she was a very prominent person on her own. She didn't sort of, wasn't just the fact that she was, you know, married to the prime minister that just elevated her profile. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, in the, again, it, it, it speaks to the technology because it's, it's, you know, if, Maureen McTeer and Joe Clark were the prime minister and spouse during the time of social media. Maybe we'd know a whole bunch more. Like maybe we'd be, we'd have Maureen McTeer in our faces all the time. I don't know. I think, do you think this is the end? We're going well, to, do you think we're going to see lots more of Anna. Sorry. I don't mean to jump all over that. Do you think we're going to see oh, lots yeah. more of Anna Polyev? Yeah. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah. They're going to put her front and center. Although I do want to point out one important thing about the video that mm -hmm. uh, we have not mentioned yet. So that rally specifically was held in Fredericton. <laughs> yes. And uh, are you aware of the numbers at this rally? Yes, thanks to your TikTok, Be partly as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the roughly 2,000 that a bunch of conservatives, including Jenny Byrne, have been claiming were there uh, in a venue that maxes out at 350 people. So my standing theory is that they ran the, uh, the whole thing six times. <laughs> In half That's hour, how they got such old. good footage. Right? She yeah. just yeah. had takes on takes on take take. on take on take on take. Exactly. It's all comped <laughs> together. <laughs> and so, like, the number of people in the comments on that TikTok I made about that coping who were like, there was more people outside. Like, yeah, there was 1,700 people <laughs> waiting outside in Marriott in Fredericton. In Fredericton. Exactly. <laughs> like, come on. Gathered guys. around flat screens. 
watching. Just admit they're making it up. But I mean, Once, it's, it's so please. weird because I mean, it's such a it's such an acid wash <laughs> gene thing to me. Like with the numbers, it's like this was this has already been done in 2016 by the Trump administration yeah, and the inauguration numbers in the way so that it was always meant four to years work. behind here remember yeah so, exactly now we're trying exactly acid wash genes but it worked in the way that it was meant to work because it like if you say enough nonsense it gets so hard to knock it down and so the endless endless fire hose of nonsense the it's the fire hose of falsehoods Mm, that's good alliteration. Um, i like that that is so hard to because you you sit there constantly trying to debunk it but but once once it's out there you you could only debunk it to maybe a yeah, fraction of the late. people who hear yeah, it yeah yeah exactly it's a, it's the correction section in a newspaper it's like it's it's legally it's fine to be able to do that and it, but i mean no very few people are going i better start with the corrections to find out what i read yesterday that was wrong um, the please don't sue us department yeah all right well it's gotten into math now i think we should finish it off here with our theme song um <clears throat> Thank you so oh, much, yes. everyone, for listening and or watching. And um, okay. while uh, the podcast is broken, players scramble to find their instruments for this week's episode. Oh, I see we've got the sales whistle, but using it as a block. That's nice. Well, I can oh, use the... Oh, we've got a side camera of Lisa, of Lisa now. I don't know. It's like a new shot. What is happening? <laughs> Look at this. Right you should do a little turn to the camera. Yeah, do a turn to the camera like, by the way. Do it like Kevin Spacey in uh, House of Cards before you went creepy. Yeah. I'm not doing anything like Kevin Spacey. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wise career choice. And life choice. There you really. go. All right, so we ready? ready? Who's setting the beat? Okay, I got you. Oh, okay. you're going to do it? <laughs> wow, there's a lighter. Here we go. Podcast is broken, 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 podcast is broken. Ha! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a, that was a, uh, what do they call that, uh, not an homage uh, to, uh, hey Macarena, that was what it was, a little bit of an homage to that. Hey Macarena. This is, okay, uh, before we go, <laughs> your fun fact of the day, because you got to hear this. Okay. There are two different versions of the Macarena, one of which was on the radio in Canada and one of which was on the radio of every, everywhere else. Look it up. Was there a reason? Did you bring fun facts there? I didn't know we had to do that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, just I am a person with fun facts. Well, well, one, one was by, like, Los Del Rio or Mar or something like that. Okay. And then... I, I can't remember the names of the band. Now they're going to want us to do the Macarena, Macarena next time. So no. Exactly. No, no. What's I mean, also, I mean, okay. you've been asking us to bring fun facts, and I think it's a great idea, Steve. You can bring one uh, for the first time next week as well. Um, <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Podcast is broken.ca. Make sure you subscribe, uh, and you'll get notifications in your email inbox. You can find us in all the podcast places. And who knows, maybe we'll have guests next time as well. And then we'll have to really clean up our act. Tighten up the ship. Wow. Well, that's definitely things. a thing we'll do. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Have folks. a good week. <laughs>